Hey, and welcome back to the Bond Economy. Last time I played, it was all about getting the Fire Cape, and now I'm working on Clue Scrolls. Figured I'd just try and upgrade my items, and uh, since I was fighting so many Hellhounds on task, it's just super nice. You can see there I was using the last of my Emerald Bolts from my Jad Kill, <laughs> so definitely wanted to make use of the few items I had left. And there's 48 Slayer. Got quite a few Brimstone keys from this task. And Konar has been my goat, so... You know, I'm just getting some decent tasks here, getting some nice levels. And getting this key piece for eventually the Ring of Wealth. So here's an easy task, but it was kind of hard for me at this low level. So Anchor are kind of challenging, even with a Dragon Scimitar. There you can see a nice, easy clue. And back to Konar with Calphites for yet another Slayer level. Fifty Slayer. That's quite the achievement. And there we go, I got a defense level as well, and task completed. So now it's time for one of my favorite areas in the game, the Warrior's Guild. This place is really important, especially for early game Ultimate Iron Man. And uh, you can get the Dragon Defender here. But on top of that, you can get a couple of skill capes, and there's just an amazing shop here that is so worth your time, I swear. Here's the sweaty attack cape. But what I'm more interested in is all of the very cheap potions from the shop right next to this guy. And uh, also the extremely cheap food <laughs> over next to her as well. You can see me buying some mithril items here for training so I can get those tokens. And I just thought I'd show a quick montage of this area. Because um, it's a little ridiculous. It's so big and useful. And the grind here really isn't that long for what they give you. If you manage to get a strength cape, you can come here anytime you please. And it's just so nice. So here I'm practicing my prayer flicking. I already had quite a bit of practice from killing Jad, but I thought this would be a fun opportunity to work on it. And since I'm still sort of low defense, I figured I'd give it a shot. Save some supplies even though I got those potato with cheese and the three potions you can buy from Lily. You can already see I have a little bit of lag here, so it's a combination of using up my old supplies, <laughs> just messing around too, I guess. There's my first Warrior Guild tokens. So Mithril is basically essential if you want to quickly obtain tokens. And here's a Genie. Of course, my inventory is too full, so I gotta drop some stuff. And there's a good example of the potions you can obtain here. They're super nice. And uh, you'll see me coming back for these for even late game tasks. So I'm going to put that straight onto Herbor, the hardest skill to train for ultimates. And now it's time for me, with a little over a thousand tokens only, to obtain defenders. I think I'll be surprised at what I get here. But I gotta die first. It's always hard to pick what items you necessarily need whenever you're suiciding on the ultimate. But here I am, coming back to reobtain the Dramon Staff, because I did <laughs> drop it whenever I went to Jed. Of course, I'm going to PK this tree, sit noob. And there go all of my neat, fancy clue items into the bag. Of course I want to keep my butterfly net and my impling jar, because uh, 
The net is not so bad to reobtain. But the impling jar costs quite a bit. And uh, <laughs> you saw in one of my earlier videos I had some trouble with a Ceridome and Wizard over in Mauritania. Well, prepare to watch me fail even harder if not as just equally as hard. I'm trying to switch between Protect Magic and Melee because the Ceridome and wi Wizard switches between these and I just couldn't handle it. I was going to die there, <laughs> guaranteed. Alright, and it's Hellhound time again. Decided to finish off a wilderness task, and you can see I'm risking literally everything in my inventory, but we got the casket. So it's not all that bad. And let's get out of here as soon as possible. I don't want to get caught up by a teleblocker or something. So this is a neat little exit there going into KVD Lair, and I got a Cavalier. Not a very expensive item, but uh, it's something. So here we go, Bronze Defender. And of course, every time I get a Defender, I like to show it to Camfrina right away, just so I can reset my RNG. And here's the Iron Defender. Well, as you can see, we just barely started the Defender grind. I've only used 230 tokens. And we're already at the Iron Defender. And 62 defense, by the way. I think I'm going to train up 70 defense here. I mean, assuming I'm here for another 8 levels. Uh, but I think I'm going to rush 70 defense first. Because we have that Torax piece. And it'll just come in handy for Barbarian Assault. Being uh, tanky. And also... Um, I mean, we're going to get more Barrow's items as we progress the account now that we've got the Fire Cape. So I may as well just get myself ready for much better armor. And then after 70 defense, we can go ahead and rush 70 strength. Alright, there's the Steel Defender. You can see I'm still... Fish use shove it. <laughs> Puffly use shove it. Puffly use shove it. <laughs> you are the greatest catch. <laughs> There's the Mithril Defender, still on the same stack of tokens, and there's the Adamant Defender. I got it, and basically what I said I would get, um, I mean I was just taking a guesstimate, but it was around 1500 tokens. There it is, the Rune Defender. Uh, so now I just need to grind up for the Dragon one. Wow, that's, that was just super fast. I mean, if you look at the timer, I got bronze before I went to bed last night, and that was like maybe 25 kill count. Right now, we're on 198, so I didn't really spend very much time here at all. Uh, and I think the basement's like right over here, maybe? I don't exactly remember where it is, but I'll find it. But you know what, it might be that. Yeah, I'll find it, and I'll go get a Dragon Defender now. Pog Champ. Pog Champ indeed. And after you show the Rune Defender, to this lady in the basement, this dragon defender. you can obtain a Dragon Defender. You can see some high-level defense chads over here. Two people with Third Age items, and I'm just a lowly ultimate trying to get my Dragon Defender. These Cyclopes in the basement, though, are very good Alks. They are just excellent for high alchemy. They are 75 ranged on my Hellhounds task in the Catacombs. Excellent level, and it unlocks the Toxic Blowpipe as well as the Twisted Bow. And here's a neat hard glue scroll, once again, from my awesome stash unit. So I think now is the time for me to do the bar crawl, because this is required for Horror from the Deep. 
And it's also kind of funny because uh, your character drunkenly talks throughout it. So I was in the clan chat talking drunkenly. So here's completion of the bar crawl. And uh, we can use this agility course, but it's not really necessary. Just wanted to complete my clue step there. Here's another risky wilderness hard clue step. Really need to stop risking my items in the wilderness like this. But there's the casket. And what are we going to get from the casket, I wonder? Magic short bow. And we got some uh, pages, which is also equally as nice. But the magic sh short bow there is uh, super duper good. Very good item for Iron Man. I think I'm just so excited I gotta type a smile about it. Okay. I'm so. <laughs> but I have any. There's my. I think second or third cab. Oh my god. I didn't think it was possible. Don't care. You know how no, scaffolding is a make... thing? Yeah, that's And that's there's the, the black boots. I'm gonna so... make an elevator. Okay. Get you out yeah, yeah, the yeah. So you might die inside Hang on, I need to explain crush. something really quick. See, it may but be the safety regulation. That that is a crazy PV. I beat my time by three minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can see I like to watch YouTube videos while I'm playing RuneScape, and there's 70 defense. So now I can equip the Torag plate body in my inventory. About to hit the nerd log as well. So I got another clue scroll. Oh, you, well, you too. How about the flipping bottles? It's just like <laughs> that, except now it's video games. Oh, you got you. There is a uh, Joel from Vine Sauce once again. Gotta love the music in this area. So I decided to come to Shazian to grab a little bit of favor. This is basically required for the Lizardman grind later on uh, to obtain the Dragon Warhammer. Um, but I also wanted to get 5% for something. I can't quite remember exactly what you obtain at 5%, but it's very fast. You just use healing items on the Fallen Soldiers and it's as simple as that. So here's a great example of their awesome dialogue as well. And there's 5%. Uh, that's right, I wanted the Lizardmen for my clue step. Because uh, you can't get into Lizardmen Canyon without that 5%. So here I go. I was kind of scared of this part. Really didn't want to get attacked by these poisonous savages. And there's also a Ceridome and Wizard. But this time I was finally more prepared. I pulled out the Bone Crossbow and I decided to safe spot range. And the neat thing about Ceridome and Wizards and Samurai Wizards, if you gain enough distance on them, they literally cannot attack you back. So they'll either run away or they'll default to magic. And Seeing as I was flicking between Protect Melee and Protect Magic before, it's not going to make any difference now. I can just camp Protect Magic, and flicking Eagle Eye is just a bonus here. It's just going to add slight DPS. But uh, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed doing this clue after I rediscovered this advantage, I guess I should call it. It's not really an exploit, it's just forcing my opponent to stick to one attack style so I don't have to get poisoned and tank like, you know, 60 damage when my health is 72 hit points. So there we go, that's an easily dispatched Ceridoman Wizard. Went in for the kill with the <laughs> Dragon Scimitar, but it didn't work there. And, uh, still gonna do some decent damage with the Dragon Dagger against me. So I was about to freak out whenever I heard that damage and figured I'd teleport out immediately. Next step of the clue is, uh, oddly enough, near the Lizardman Shaman area, or I guess the Lizardman area, not the Shaman area, 
but I had to go all the way north on Fossil Island and take the boat to the Northern Island. So it's just nice to check out this new area. It's been around for a little while, but I absolutely love this zone. It's so nice for Iron Men. And uh, I figured I'd discover the mush trees as well because they're super useful for getting around if you're using birdhouses, if you're farming. Um, I think it might even be useful for herbivore. So definitely come check this area out if you're an Iron Man or if you need some farming XP or hunter XP or you want to pet your cat in a nice new area. <laughs> and they also have ammonite crabs here which I used earlier on as a slight training method. I wouldn't camp here super long because it can get frustrating. People will log in and steal your spot constantly. But like I was saying before, here's another great example of a clue step wizard fight. So enjoy! Unfortunately, this island is too small to properly safe spot, I believe. Let's see what I do here. I'm pretty sure I try. Yeah, you just can't really get the proper angle on this guy. So I tried casting Snare on him. And it's not going to work because I have so much melee armor on. You can see I have no food in my inventory either, so I'm playing the risky Ultimate Iron Man game here. Clearly it's not going to go in my favor, but I am doing the damage here. You can just tell I was coming back from being a bit of a noob into remembering how to do everything correctly. But yep, here we go. I'm doing the adequate damage, which is really nice. <laughs> going to tank some poison damage here, but somehow I managed to survive and teleport away at the same time. Talk about crazy RNG, <laughs> lol, and then I die in my house, which, you know, is optimal anyway. It's gonna bring my stats all the way back up. And fun fact, if you die in your house, you keep your cat. So, <laughs> make sure to insure your pets. Oh, 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 you guys were, you guys were laughing at the back. You guys were like freaking out. I'm like, well, what happened? What happened? And then it's just the fucking. <laughs> guys, <laughs> I love putting Joel in my videos. <laughs> For some reason, he's just gotta always be in the background. But here is literally the most risk I have ever done this early into the account. I don't know what I was thinking. I could have suicided half of my items, but no, I decided to even bring my cat all the way out here and fight the Zamorakian wizard. <sighs> you gotta slap me or something. But it's gonna work out in my favor, and I was keeping an eye out for the altar here, because anybody can log in, run out from where the altar is located, and that ass spec me out, use the AGS, Dragon Claws, they can cast Ancient magic Magics and Ice Barrage me. Literally anything can happen out here. So I figured I'd go ahead and just grab the casket, and if I die, I die. Somehow nobody logged in, and I made it out alive. How does he do it? And if you ever get caught by a PKer out here, a useful strategy is to run over here to the Anku, it helps even more if you have Ceridome and Bruise, but even if you don't, you can box the Anku, and that gives you enough time to either log out or make your way further down south so you can run away from the PKer. So we got the hard reward casket, and I'm just so eager and excited to open this. It's very exciting and very scary to have a casket while in the middle of the wilderness. Yeah, 
And this music always reminds me of Vanaka, the wilderness only, pay to play Ultimate Iron Man. Shout out to Vanaka, he is an excellent content creator. Gotta pet my cat while I'm in the wilderness, you know? Let your animals know you love them, even whenever you're in danger. It's time to get out of here and check this casket. Samurak page 3, that's pretty nice, and some elks. You know what? Can't complain about that. So now it is time for me to do this quest. I forget the name of this one, um, but it's required for Song of the Elves, and I figured I would get some quests out of the way. Um, can't exactly remember why I needed this done. Maybe for just quest points for Barrow's Gloves or something like that. Yeah, I think I just needed Barrow's Gloves, but here is the beginning to the Making History quest. And here's me farming some herbs all the way out in Mauritania. You can tell it's quite a, kind of a hard method for Ultimate Iron Man to farm all the way out here. You really gotta juggle items unless you have an empty inventory. <laughs> gotta do the zombie walk though. <laughs> Wait, no physic puzzle where you gotta all right well so i figured i'd grab some ecto tokens triphobia yeah. <laughs> all right, anyway. there's joel in the background once again all right well, anyway let's get barney out of here so here's completion of making history it's a fairly straightforward quest you don't really have to do too much it is excellent for quest points and also uh bit of XP as well. Ah, now it's time for kudos. And I think I can obtain some extra free XP from historian Minas here as well. Welcome to Varak Museum. I have some information for you. This guy is awesome for getting some free herbler XP and also buffing up your kudos. So if you're trying to unlock the dig site or Bon Voyage, you want to come to this guy after you're done getting all your kudos. Or I guess to get your kudos, but you also want to talk to him after your kudos. And I'm going to put this right onto Herbler. That's a thousand herb XP. Always welcome on an ultimate Iron Man, and that's going to be the level for me as well. So here we are back in the catacombs doing the warped jelly task. These are excellent for getting uh, mithril boots, which I just acquired. So now we can get rid of the black boots. And it's just a straight up upgrade. Next on the list is adamant boots, which are fairly easy to obtain. But then after that is rune boots, which takes quite a while to unlock. Still practicing my prayer flicking though. And you gotta love the bone crossbow. I'm always using it around this time. It's getting me those quick range levels. And it's just super good damage for how cheap the ammunition is. So there's another hard clue scroll. Jellies almost always drop clue scrolls on task. You don't even have to be on task for them, but they're just super nice. And here's 55 Slayer. That means broad bolts unlocked. Slayer Staff, and Turoth. Excellent combination of unlocks that are super essential for early game and late game. Broad Bolts are going to be so good for basically any ranging. They're kind of cheap. They're very good fletching XP. And uh, they're a good replacement for Bone Bolts as well, but Bone Crossbow OP. So here I'm trading in some of my fossils from grinding Ammonite Crabs. Just getting some passive strength and attack levels, as well as defense levels and hit points. But like I said earlier, this isn't the best place to AFK grind. And there's 77 range. Training at Mount Quita Morton Trolls. Ah, uh, Koner, always sending me all over the place. But uh, I'll come back here in the future for raids. And here is my favorite Slayer Master, Neve. 
173 cal fight. Nice. So the great thing about Neve at this point of the game and later on is that she assigns so many good tasks and anything that is worth skipping usually doesn't happen very often. So you're going to see me skipping a lot of tasks over at Neve, but you're going to see me getting a lot of good tasks over at Neve as well. So here I am, going for my first unlock here, which is going to be super essential. Or maybe I'm just showing off the menu here, I can't remember. <laughs> Ah yes, bigger and badder, superior monsters. This is a wonderful unlock to get first. And like a boss is also good, but it really depends on how much you like bossing and which ones you can unlock. But yeah, I think I'm going to make my first selection for unlock here. Dust Devil unlock is also very good. Gargoyle Smasher is amazing. There's just so many things you can obtain from Slayer Masters. But I definitely want the Rune Pouch, number one. Alright, and it's Fire Giants. So, one awesome, wonderful thing about Fire Giants from Neve, you can just go straight into the cave right next to her, and it's just as easy as that. I don't know why I block fire giants here, maybe because I had the rune scimitar already, but I promise you I'm going to change that very quickly. <laughs> so back to cow fights once again. Not really that big of a fan of this task, but it is decent XP and very fast. So worth the points, definitely. So here we go, I think I'm going to go ahead and unlock Bigger and Banner. It's not really useful for Calflight, but I figured I'd get it before I start using up too many points. And it is just such an essential Slayer unlock, especially at 55+. plus. You can gain so much XP, in addition to the regular task XP. And on top of that, there's 57 Slayer. And on top of uh, getting extra XP from Bigger and Badder, you can also obtain the Imbued Heart. This guy got the mining pet at 50 mining somehow. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy. And back then, I didn't have any pets besides cats and rocks. So it's kind of crazy for me to see anybody with any pet because my pet RNG is just so abysmal. <laughs> but this chest is so good once you unlock Recipe for Disaster. And here is the Staff of Iben, which I elked a while back. And I decided to reobtain it for Barrows. Nice thing about the Staff of Iben is that it does insanely good damage early on. It's kind of expensive for Iron Men. You have to pay 400k to both fix it and imbue it. So, <laughs> you can enter back into the underground pass to make the fee a little cheaper. But trust me, it's worth the 400k or the 200k, whichever. First, you gotta repair it through the Dark Mage. And then you gotta ask for it to be imbued. And both actions cost 200k each. I think the upgrade is the one that you can just go into the underground pass to skip it. But yep, there you go. 200,000 coins. Like I'm asking here, you get 2,500 charges if you pay the extra 200k on top of that. So I figured, why not just get the full upgraded staff? Because nothing is better at Barrows except for the Trident. And I don't have that. <laughs> There you go, the Ivan Staff U. Such a good item. This thing can hit up to 32 if you're 99 magic. And it hits 25s constantly if you're not even close to 99 magic. This thing is a beast. It also has some uh, decent melee stats too, if I remember correctly. 
Look at this unit. Mithril boots, Samurai legs. Got the Initiate. The Rune Defender, the Fire Cape, the Miter. Here I am. Making some additions to my house. Gotta juggle some items here as well just to make it work. But such is life on an Iron Man. And here we go, I'm building the pet house, finally. After losing multiple cats, rest in peace, I can finally store my cat here. And there's a construction level. I'm so glad I stuck it through at Winter Toad and got so many construction levels, because it's worth it now. I can store my cat in my house. Don't ever have to worry about my cat ever again. And if I get any other pets, I can also stick them in here. Nice. Feels good, man. Alright, back to Neve, and she's gonna assign Anku. Still kinda hard for me to fight these, but, uh, you know, they're decent enough. So I figured in the meantime, I might as well get the prayer books unlocked. So I went and did a bit of Horror from the Deep, and also grabbed some planks for, I believe, stash units. Or maybe this is for my POH. Yeah, I think I decided to store some of my clue items in my player own house. Because as you can see in my inventory here and on the floor, I just have way too many clue items. Way too many clue given items, like the teleport scrolls here. And I really just need to optimize and start building stuff in my house. So I suicided my bag. And here's me alking some stuff. You gotta get rid of the unessential items, and sometimes you gotta take some stuff that's not nearly as useful. Like this stupid magic longbow. Nobody needs this. I remember saying I might use it for Jad. <laughs> How wrong I was. But yeah, now that I have the magic shortbow, it's just uh, completely useless to me. I don't need the magic longbow. <laughs> so I decided I was going to drop my clue items. As nice as they looked for the fashion scape, I believe I dropped them over to my main. Look at this beast. Black dragon hide legs. Red cavalier. I'm looking like a 2007 fashion scape over here. Gotta repair the Torag's plate before I can use it again. But I decided I don't need the red cav either, so I just put it on the table in Edgeville and let whoever wanted it have it. I think my main priority here is getting some rooms built, or at least getting some things in my house built. Also, just getting rid of unnecessary items, because I have way too much stuff taking up bag space, and I need to build this treasure chest, as well as a few other things in this room. You can see earlier that I stored my fire cape in the cape rack, and this costume room is just super essential for ultimates. You can put so many items over here. You can see I'm lagging once again. I just want to build this treasure chest, and I'm lagging out every two seconds. But I'll get it done. <laughs> yeah, of course, I lagged all the way out back to the main menu. But there it is. In the midst of still lagging, the oak treasure chest. It's not insanely good, but I can store the black pickaxe in it. Which is, uh, you know, at least one item taken out of my inventory. And the black pickaxe is the best in slot pickaxe for abyss rune crafting. So if I ever decided to do that, which is kind of crazy on an ultimate, but whatever, then uh, I have the best lightweight pickaxe in the game for that. And I will always have it, I guess, unless I get PK'd for it. It's not too hard to get it again, though. It's just an easy clue item. And here I was trying to sell off K 
Chaos Runes from Otaku because I want to buy an Onyx later on for the Amulet of Fury, but as you can see, almost every world is full of people overstocking the shop, full of Chaos Runes, so I'm not really going to make very much money, or I guess Takul, off of those, so I decided to just give up on that, come back later. I'm still hanging on to my Warrior Guild tokens while I'm juggling these items, because I still need to get that Dragon Defender. So this is an interesting hurdle here for me. I'm really surprised nobody picked up these items. But I had to run all the way to the sawmill, drop the planks, drop the axe, drop the saw and the hammer, and just juggle all of these items between areas just so I could build in my house. I could have done maybe a little better method here, but such is life. Whenever you're playing an Ultimate Iron Man and you need to build something or you need to do some task, don't have enough inventory space, you just gotta drop everything. Just how it goes sometimes. But here I'm going to go ahead and build the repair space because I want the armor stand. This is gonna save me loads and loads of money. Instead of going to Bob, I can use my Barrow's items on the armor stand here, and it's going to save me a big chunk of money dependent on what my smithing level is. So you can see there I would have saved about 8k as opposed to going to Bob, and here I'm just grabbing all my stuff back from the floor. And now it's time for War from the Deep. What an interesting boss battle and quest this is. And just a... <laughs> Something I wanted to get out of the way. Store all of these pages. You, you can see here that I have some of these potato with cheese from the Warrior Guild. Just a good example of uh, how useful the Warrior's Guild can be. This is such a cheap, easy, reliable food source. And you can use it anywhere. I have a feeling I'm going to be using these potato with cheese for Zora, for Barrows, for the completion of Recipe for Disaster, for just about everything. And you can see that Dagonoth Mother was giving me quite some issue here. I wasn't used up, I, excuse me, I wasn't using up all of my food quite yet, but it was quite the struggle too. I was barely hanging on here. Just wanted to make sure I didn't die and lose all of my items to an instance. And you can see I would have lost all of this. Just waiting for the right phase on the Dagonoth Mother here. And I just go ahead and use a fire spell while I can. Go ahead and unequip my ranged item so I get a little bit more accuracy. <laughs> it's still not enough damage. Probably going to switch on me before I can get the killing shot. But nope, there we go. quest points. Awesome. And there it is, 70 strength. So I decided to grab the god books here, and if you don't know this, you can obtain any god book for any given clue page you have. I'm going to pick Guthix just because it's my favorite old school runescape god. And you can just go ahead and store your page, drop the book, and it'll re retain the pages you've stored forever. So I'm going to grab the Ceridomen and Zamorak, or Ceridomen and Armadil. There we go. And there's four god books on the floor. But hey, that's a ton of cleared that's inventory good. space. I think I said feels goodman there. <laughs> That's so me. Alright, and here's more potions. I believe I'm gonna go on a Barrow's trip with Encased very soon. But I decided. So it's time to get the Rune Defender with Encased. 
This dude is awesome, and we're about to get double. Did I just say ruin? We're about to get double dragon defender in about 50 kill count. Let's get it. So, unfortunately, encased had way. There he is, the elite <laughs> gamer himself. So, uh, I checked this shop just a second ago, and there's like a decent amount of food left in there. But I think uh, I'm gonna just hop worlds in between grinding over here with my buddy. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> Tokens <laughs> came here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so. We're just gonna chill here, but I'm gonna hop so I'm not rude. And, uh, so we can share some food and potions that way. But yeah, I think, uh. Damn, he's been doing them fast like me, too. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, maybe a thousand or two thousand tokens is all I'll need, because it's only a one out of a hundred chance, and we're. Pretty decent stats right now. Just need to get attack up two levels and we can wield the whip. And uh, Dragon Defender would be super nice this early on. <laughs> I really want to be a troll and just be like, uh, hi YouTube. <laughs> you know, the old newbie way of saying it. <laughs> I love that I mistyped it too, that's so good. Alright, but yeah, I'll see you whenever I have enough GP for this Torag's plate. And that'll probably be exactly at 70 attack. Um, and then we'll be optimized for Slayer, basically. We just need to get the uh, torso that Encased has over there. And uh, basically, after that, to get max gear, we would need to go to God Wars Dungeon. So that's endgame content. But uh, I'm excited to do my new task, and uh, <laughs> I keep getting Hellhounds and Anku, uh, but uh, I already have a hard clue, so I'm excited to get that done. Keep grinding Hellhound and Anku all the way to 85, and then we'll have that Abyssal Whip. Alright, we're going on. Let's get it. Oh my god, this absolute mad lad did it at 3 kill count. Look at this fucking champion. <laughs> wow. Looks... <laughs> looks so good <laughs> with the zambi legs. Damn, dude, that is so sick. Well, I got an adamant dagger, so that's pretty nice. I mean, right now I'm at, uh, let's see, what, what are we working with here? Five kill, five kill count, really? I'm getting wrecked here. Five Cyclops, no Dragon Defender. Broken game, Jagex, what are you doing? Well, I'm honestly pretty impressed, so I guess it's my time to get the uh, Dragon Defender myself. I forgot to bring nature rune, so I, I'll just LMS this or something, I don't know. And uh, we'll get the Torag plate equipped. I guess I'll go do Regicide, it's gonna take way too many quests to get the Fossil Island Death Bank right away. But I will get that in the future, or Espori, whichever. Uh, but yeah, let's hope for this Dragon Defender, that would be nice. I can't wait 
friend Case to see this. Excellent. Now the time to get the Dragon Defender. Alright, here we go. From broken to first time fully repaired to now degrading arrows. <laughs> I was gonna type that out, but uh, <laughs> I wanted to see his reaction. Kind of scuff that, but oh man, I'm tanking damage so much better now. <laughs> oh, that's great. And you know what? I knew it was gonna look like this, but the black dragon hide chaps really complement the Torag plate. This is gonna be super good for like raging and stuff. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. He doesn't even. This absolute gamer is thinking about EHP more than he can realize how much of a gamer chat I look like right now in game. <laughs> well, this is great. We finally have the Toreg plate body, so now we can go do Dagonoth Rex um, now that we have tank gear and uh, the fully charged Ivan Staff, of course. Uh, this means we can do barrows as well. I mean, this is perfect armor. I just need the nate is not, and uh, hopefully the fighter torso at some point. But uh, yeah, let's get that dragon defender, gamers, and check that out. We're so close to base 70 melees. Hopefully, we can get the D def before 70 attack. All right. Anyway, let's get this loot. 50 prayer. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you checking out the Bond economy. It's been a blast, and I apologize for how long it took since the last video for me to upload another video, but bear with me. It's just been a very arduous grind, and I've been working on a lot of things, trying to get a new job, and you know, that's just how life be sometimes. So thanks for checking me out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.